करोति मैडम just rd ma'am will be joining just now okay then we'll start the session A teacher, welcome. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Then I start the end of the plan of the Paranamadi and ask me the chair. Sir, number introduction with you, Manati Startium, sir. Ah, okay, okay. Please, sir, no, me introduce okay, chay the tip in a Startium, sir. Say you, okay, okay.
Hello. Uh, madam. Some, uh, Jalaja, madam. Uh, why RD is not joining till now? Now actually 2 for 36. Uh. RD is RD. Uh, somebody call her actually. Otherwise, delay. Time is, uh, sir, sir, can you see? Sir, madam, is there? Her video is also on. One, one minute. Actually, you know, we are live streaming this session. So that's why some delay is there. One okay. answer is okay. We will live stream it. Can you start it? You can, you can see her, no? I think. Yes, ma'am. I'm very much here. On behalf of Regional Center Kochi, we welcome you for this uh, National Science Day webinar. Actually, this science, the National Science Day is celebrated every, every year on February 28th in commemoration of the discovery of Raman effect by Sir C. V. Raman. And uh, the theme for National Science Day 2023 is Global Science for Global Wellbeing. And uh, a series of lectures have been held by various regional centers. And uh, the event was has been coordinated by Dr. Jalaja Kumari, Assistant Regional Director, and Dr. Prasita Unni Krishnan, Assistant Director. And uh, uh, the, uh, I request uh, Dr. Jalaja Kumari, ARD, to introduce the uh, guest for the day, this, uh, who will be deliberating on the topic, research in science and innovations. Over to Dr. Jalaja Kumar. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Prasida? I mean, it's very, she is also here only, ma'am. OK, OK, OK. OK. I am very much thankful to introduce uh, Dr. Shalimon KG a young scientist, a well-known, renowned young scientist of India. And uh, at present, he is assistant professor and uh, Ramaling Swami fellow of, uh, in chemistry. He is working in Department of Chemistry, SS College, Tevera. And uh, so happily, I have to tell you that um, I am too much privileged. I am so much privileged with uh, Dr. Shalimon Kiri as being one of my uh, previous student or uh, alumni of SNDP Yogam Training College, Adimali. And this moment, I feel very much proud of you, Dr. Shalmon, uh, because our uh, teacher educator, we were expecting a teacher educator or a, or a school teacher from that fraternity, but he became one of the renowned scientists in India, and he is considered as one among the 200 scientists of India in 2021. He had had his uh, bachelor degree from our uh, St. Michael's College, Sherthala. Uh, that is also one of our study center. And he did his master's degree from uh, the same college itself and did PhD from Amrita Institute of uh, Amrita University, Amrita Vishavidya with the University Kochi campus. And he did his PhD in nanoscience and molecular medicine. And his master degree was in polymer chemistry. And he did his PhD in physical science and BSc chemistry in bachelor degree. And it's very much uh, notable that he is a scholar with the H index 31. H index, uh, I think the researchers may know that. Uh, it is an order level and uh, productivity level citation index. It is a metric. And 31 is a, a highest uh, uh, indicator. And um, usually for an assistant professor, this will be in between. Um, this is um, 
20 itself is a very good record. But at the level of a professor, being an assistant professor, he is ranked in the level of a professor uh, with the 31 index and uh, his I-10 index is 46. That is also in a very good high position and his citations are uh, marked as 3,288. Such a big uh, reputed person he is and uh, he is holding a prestigious Ramalinga Swami fellowship from 2020 to 25. And uh, he was a former research guide of our uh, Kusat, Cochin University of Science and Technology, Kerala. And he was a visiting scientist in uh, Amradavishwar Vidyavidam. And uh, he's, he was a uh, visiting uh, scientist in University of Duisburg, Essen, Germany. And uh, he was a postdoctoral fellow from... Mom, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, from the Ministry of Science and Technology of Taiwan and uh, also from uh, Germany. And uh, he was uh, the winner of the IET Premium Award for the best paper in 2014. And his, I told you already that his first doctoral fellowship was from Taiwan. Such a big scientist is now working at one of our study centers, SH College Tevera. And uh, uh, I think this prestigious moment to introduce my previous student, uh, uh, Dr. Chalumon Ketty, to say the innovative practices of research and uh, in science among us and uh, we can we are eager to hear from sir about the innovative practices can be adopted uh, for the young scientist more than that of the science students of ignu and uh, uh, this live station is streaming in youtube also i think uh, students in future also will be benefited from this talk and uh, Thank you very much for uh, receiving our invitation and finding time to share with us uh, this uh, one, hour one hour duration of time. And uh, you are most welcome to Indira Gandhi National Open University, Dr. Shalimun Ketty, for the whole fraternity of IGNO, RC Kochit, Regional Center Kochit. Please. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, teacher. First of all, I would like to express my sincere gratitude and thanks to Jalaja teacher. She was my teacher uh, in SNDP Yogam Training College and also uh, recently only I came to know that she is there and uh, first of all my sincere thanks to teacher and each and everyone in uh, regional center Kochi for giving me this opportunity. So first of all <clears throat> I would like to present this in a way of uh, helpful for students who wish to do or continue for research after degree or after PG and also how to find out the options to find out uh, a position for research and research based jobs. So it's like a not going into the very depth of the presentation, just going through the basic science and how science and innovations are connected to each other and how these innovations are leading to some products and how we can get into this kind of research work to do all these things so basically i am so i would like to start with uh, 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 all the science streams then i wish to go to the uh, biological side of research because we cannot explain all the research in science in a single day or not in a single week so we will focus on some biomaterials based work which is my area so I would like to start the one. So let me start the presentation. So hope this is visible. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. That slide is changing. Yes, Better to be shown in full screen. 
Full screen means in. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm yeah. trying trying for full screen, okay. but. Okay. It's full screen here, but uh, it's not showing full screen there. Yes, right. Full screen for me actually. So first, you uh, make it full screen, then share that screen. That full screen. Oh, okay. One second. But when I am when I am making this full screen, when I have to go back and no, you should can proceed. I think all of us can see. Please proceed. No issue. Visible now for others. Yes, yes, it's visible. Okay, okay. Then okay. So you can see outside. Yeah, I will try one more time because. So after making it, it full screen, you can just press Alt and Tab. You can move to the screen. Then from there, oh, you can one, share. One, one, one more second, one more second. After? Uh, making it full screen. Yeah. Press Alt plus Tab. OK. Then you will reach in the screen, this uh, meeting screen. From there, you can share that window, full screen window. Alt Tab. Alt plus Tab. Okay, uh, but I have to continue this one. I cannot leave the switches, right? Uh, you keep pressing Alt, then press Tab and reach that screen, that window. Oh, that meeting okay, window. okay. I think now it's done, I think. Yes, yes. thank you. Okay. And now it's changing. My uh, my area of presentation today is a research in science and innovations, but it's a little bit a broad area. But I would like to uh, cut it down to an area of uh, biomaterial science and also with some basic science and also how to go for research area. This is a student aspect I would like to present. So myself is uh, like a uh, the teacher introduced. Uh, this I myself is Dr. Shalimon. I am working in Tevera Sagrad College as a Ramalinga Swami Fellow in Department of Chemistry. And uh, my I am coming from Alapi District, uh, Chartala. And I did my BA in SNDP Yogam Training College. There, uh, Jalaja teacher was my teacher. And, uh, uh, and also, I would like to express my thanks to her for this opportunity. So, the question is, the image, what we are seeing here is a rat with an ear on the its body. The question is whether this is real or not. And the answer is that it is real. And how this became real is, this is a tissue engineered mice or rat, which really made an ear shape tissue on the back of this mice and the mice lives with this ear. And the question is why you want to do this, why you want to make this one is simple. You can make any shape, any structure by the technology called regenerative engineering or tissue engineering. That means you can make any tissue, any organ by yourself and keep stitching on your body and make it as an artificial to an original natural organ. So before going to the regenerative engineering part, I would like to go a little bit with some crazy ideas in science, crazy innovations. These are the images what we are seeing here is for convenience, inventions made into some innovations for the convenience of our life. The person lying, sleeping with a pillow 
and for convenience he made a hall underneath the pillow and he can sleep well this is a fan connected with the chopstick of a noodles and since we all know that the noodles are very hot it's very difficult to eat when it is hot and it is not tasty when it is cold so while it is hot it's better to eat that type but it's boiling hot it's difficulty so they made a fan so that wherever you are bringing the chopstick the fan will follow it's attached these are some we can say that crazy ideas but along with it is an innovative idea this is like a nose paper for for anybody has a cold or anything not necessary to carry this in your pocket always there is like a toilet paper you can this is crazy idea we cannot use it for uh, our daily life but somehow this is managing its need it's managing our our requirement of this paper this is like a radio when you are in shower where when you are in underneath the water you can listen to the song this is like our our glue glue stick it's like a butter stick on the butter instead of spoon you can use this butter stick and you can apply this on the toasted bread and you can eat it this is like a water shower umbrella where you don't need to hold by your hand it will be stick on your back side and shoulder so that it will protect you from the 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 rain so you don't need to hold it all the time you can freely walk and this is a clever toilet we used to call clever toilet that means the toilet seat cover is like winter countries the cold countries this seat will be always hot you can temperature set on like 37 or 40 degrees celsius you can always set and you won't feel anything cold in, especially for in the winter countries in the cold time winter time and these are like walking hand so there are so many crazy ideas or we can call it as innovative ideas some are useful some we may feel crazy but all came out from the innovations of science innovations from science so what kind of science is actually we are doing in this one what kind of science is helping us to make the inventions and to make the innovations from inventions we know that there are different branches of science i don't need to go to i don't think i need to go to the details of this one one is biology those who are doing the studying on living things we call a biologist and the botany those who are doing studies on the plants we call the scientist who is doing this one we call a botanist then a zoologist who is studying the animals then a chemist who is doing the experiments on chemistry or chemical materials and chemicals or in acids and bases we can call it as that scientist as a chemist those who are doing the science of matter and energy or interaction between them we can call it as a physicist so there are different branches of sciences there ecology is there study of how organisms interact with each other we can call it call that person who is doing the study we can what is an ecologist geologist is doing the structure of earth surface and a meteorologic meteorologist is doing the weather change and climate changes then an astronomer he is studying on the heavenly bodies so there are scientists who are dealing with the different aspects of science we can call different by different name taxonomist is actually studying the classification of plants and animals uh, if an expert he is we can call it a taxonomist so there are a lot of lot of varieties of branches of science who is doing each person is doing a different part of work different part of study in that kind of science so what is the science and what is the technology how these are interconnected and how these technology and science relation is helping us to reach to an innovation and how these innovations are helping us to reach to an innovative idea and how these innovative ideas are helping human life easier this is what we need to know what is the science we know what is the science science is all about learning facts new facts how plants are growing why rain rain fall down then asking the questions collecting the information finding the answer inventing new science new things laptop computer mobile phones the monitor tv television so everything came from some some time some days back someone has identified someone has discovered invented all these technologies so we are using today so there is a real connection between science and technology what is dealing with the natural world is we call science and what is existing 
in the natural world we call it as a science and how we are dealing this science to a technical aspect for useful applications we can call it as a technology the use of science in an application level we can call it as a technology that means when science joins technology the new inventions are coming out when the basic science are connecting with its real extract then new inventions are born the thing is that so what is an innovation and how these inventions are leading to the innovations what is an innovation and how these inventions are lead to innovations so these are major inventions throw back from 1911 or in the 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 century the beginning of the century up to the last whole century we can see that these are the generations different formations of different products and you can see that 1911 1912 1913 14 15 up to 1991 if you see we can see that a rise of technology from an old fashion to a new fashion we can see that there are drones in the very uh, advanced medicines generated in in 80s 1980s then mobile phones were invented in like cellular phones we used we started getting smartphones only late very late in india but in the western countries they already started use in before before us then windows was invented we invented what we are using now then dna was invented even before that the computer first computer was invented then chemicals then super computers so if you go back then bratostes if you go back to 19 starting of the 1900 century 1900 we can see that there are a lot of lot of inventions which which generated and it's led to so many products as a result of the inventions so these innovations what is innovation actually all these inventions if we can modify for the use of our purpose we can call it as an innovation so any invention if you if you just use if you just discovered a safety pin the first one of the best discoveries in the world is considered as a, the the invention of a safety pin which we can use for so many places so safety pin was identified innovate uh, invented first then where all the places which all places we are using the safety pin we can say that that is an innovative idea you can make a chain of connecting each other you can make a chain of safety pin you can make a long chain safety pin so instead of using that safety pin just for hooking the cloth if you use for any other purpose we can say that is innovation so existing idea we can see that these are the watermelons made in the form of square uh, like a cubic shape these are actually japanese technology when the watermelon is actually growing during growing they keep all these growing watermelons inside a cube box so that when it is growing this will shape into that cube cubical structure and once it is fully grown once you remove the mold the cover you will get a cube shape so that the advantage is that transportation packing parcel handling everything will be too much easy when you have this square shape space packing will be very easy so this is japanese technology so this we already know that if you keep some kind of mold into some growing things it will attain that shape but when you think critically and make it useful for our better living things better life then this we call innovation so the major difference between invention and innovation is a invention is just a creation of a new idea but innovation is a result of that new idea product service or processing to do something in new way so we already have a phenomenon and if you can use that phenomenon for modification of something we can call it as a innovation so there are basically three things need for a making things into a application level one is the creativity the act of turning new and imagination imaginative ideas the second one is the invention then third one is the innovation this based on this one we can make any product anything which can be very much useful for our day to day life first we need to have a creativity in science then we need to have an invention 
then you can club these together to make an innovation and this is possible only through research that means research is the backbone of all the innovative ideas and based on these innovative ideas research, research also divided into two types one is the basic research which focus everything on the basics of science and second one is applied research how this basic science basic research can be used for the application level to make it into product so we know about basic research this is how the universe started how the protons neutrons electrons composed of these are the basic things which we need to know about the theoretical facts and applied research is how we can use this knowledge about these basic things to make a product or make an innovative idea these are some great innovations we have seen in the recent history the first one is is a virtual reality screen some of you might have seen this one virtual reality screen you can keep your cell phone in that virtual reality screen and you can find out those videos which is a virtual reality screen will work and those videos you can play and those videos you can see in a three dimension manner you can see those are the virtual reality screen then three dimensional printer 3d printers these are the the new generation things recently there was news saying that a house was made using a giant three dimensional printer three dimensional printer is nothing you can make any three dimensional object on any shape using a printer it's just like a, our normal paper printer but instead of paper ink this will be printing some plastic so you can you can develop a autocad design so that that design will be implemented or given to the machine that machine will print according to the information what we have given here it is printing a, a high heel uh, shoes kind of thing so you, you can print any kind of thing so the advantage is that if you want to print if you want to make an artificial kidney you can make that kidney if you want to make a bone of your part for example someone got an accident got an injury the part of the bone has broken and it's gone so we need to have that particular space particular shape of that bone into your leg or your, your femur which has gone in an accident so we can do the scanning or ct scan it will give the exact position and size of your damaged bone and that drawing will give the 3d printer an exact idea of what is the size and what is the shape of the bone which has to be replaced on your femur so that information once we transfer to the machine the machine will print the same shape of the bone then we can later on we can add all the ingredients for the bone and you can do the operation you can keep it back to the femur so that the bone will be completely filled your problem is solved so those are 3d printers in advanced technology folding cycle those who are hiking trekking those who are mountaineers you some places you don't need to walk some places if there is a parallel area you can ride by the bicycle so you can carry the bicycle with you but it should be lightweight and foldable so that you can so those, those are the technology came out from the inventions these are fire extinguishing drones drones we already know they are used for so many things heli photography the helicam photography everything drones are used but once these drones can be used for some kind of fire extinguisher so that drone can go anywhere where even the fire rescue person cannot go that place drone can fly high and distinguish the the, the fire In some places we know about this some flies dangerous flies are there which will make the nest on the top area of the building and if this can cannot be removed by any kind of human activities drones can be used so when the drone is used for just for entertainment is just an innovation just just an invention of drone but when this drone is used for this kind of useful things we can call it as an innovative idea this is a bond screw degradable bond screw what we are seeing in the right hand uh, bottom side of the, the the slide is a bond screw we all know that when we have some kind of accident or if bond breakage is there we used to say that we put steel and we screw it to the bond and we keep it static so that we don't take we take rest we don't walk 
then after some time the bond joins back then we all know that if this electric the the metallic plate is there metallic screw is there once the bond is healed you definitely have to go back and reopen it back and open the our the muscle back or bond back and remove this plate so you need one more surgery again so that's a tedious process painful process so there you can use a biodegradable bond screws so that once you implant the screws you don't need to remove it it will be there it will dissolve in your body after some time so that the bonds the bond is healed this biodegradable screw also will heal back it will dissolve in your body you don't need to so these are the major major hot inventions have been made in recent years all because of science research all because of innovative research when we think about our daily life with everything what we are seeing we will come to know that there are so many things we are every day we are undergoing we are taking and we are using they are life saving drugs synthetic fibers synthetic detergents variety of cosmetics preservatives for our food fertilizers paper glass plastics beautiful paints so many things we are going through every day we are seeing and sometimes we are using right from the morning we are waking up when you are taking the brush the brush is made up of plastic when you are taking the paste it's made up of some chemicals when you are washing then you are using a tap that is made up of metals then we are using the wash basin wash basin is made up of some ceramic materials then you take the bath you are using soap all made up of some chemicals some fatty acids then you are taking the shower then you are taking the bath towel it's all made up of cellulose everything one day or other day somebody has invented and though someone has invented those invention for the useful technology as some innovative things that's what the science is has a strong hold in in our everyday life consider these images these are clothes are their medicines dyes paints your cell phone cover your battery charger your car your pencil pen the fertilizers the detergents the brush whatever you see whatever you see in, even whatever you are watching the specs you are using now when you are watching my my presentation everything is made up of some kind of material which was not existing in earth when we born it was invented by someone so someone has to identify someone has to make it someone has made it who made this all these things and how they all these things were made that is all about the research the researchers and scientists and coming to the potential research areas in science we can see that now i will speak some major areas a wide area then we will focus down back to the specified area of bio biomaterials based regenerative engineering so some major areas are like photocatalysis photocatalysis is a kind of cleaning technology for windows we know that the burj khalifa the tallest tallest building ever known till now right now there is no other building taller than this one burj khalifa has so many glass windows can you imagine how we can clean this windows at around more than 100 floors and more than 800 meters with the wind speed of more than 60 to 70 km per hour on the top floor how a person can stand near the window outside and clean this window definitely this will be with completely complete dust after some time even after one year so this window has to be clear otherwise there will be no view those who are coming to visit the burj khalifa so these things has to be clean so some expensive buildings are using self cleaning windows using the technology photocatalysis this also coming from science from research photocatalysis is nothing we use some catalyst on the surface of the window as a coating so that when automatically at sunlight in presence of moisture this will always clean the window and make it always transparent it's called photocatalysis photocatalytic activity we call and this is one type of research going on in the innovative research area another one is polymers for space defense and daily use polymers for space this is a kevlar reinforced tires most of the people will not be aware of this kind of tracks because these are 
used in the very largest mines of Germany, which carries more than 300, nearly 300 to 400 tons of the mine, the, the coal it will carry. So if you see the size of the tire, this is much, much bigger than or almost the size of a, a small truck in our country, the, the size of the tire. Because this has to carry a huge, large quantity of uh, weight. So what kind of material has to be made up of these kind of tires? Because too much weight, it should be very strong. Kevlar reinforced tires are these which using this one. So what is a Kevlar? Kevlar is actually a kind of material which is used to make bulletproof jacket. That means it is very, very strong, extremely strong, but it is not a metal. It's kind of a polymeric material, Kevlar fiber. So the, we use this for the tires. Space suit. This space suit is almost 10,000 US dollar will be the cost for the production of this space suit. So what kind of material it will be? If the NASA is using this one, they are taking the space, the persons to the space, which where all the climate conditions are entirely different from our Earth atmosphere, what we are staying now. It's in the space, zero gravity, high, very low temperature. So this suit, the material of the suit should be capable of withstanding sudden or very extreme climate changes or pressure differences. And at the same time, it should be safe or keep away all the kind of toxins and also it should be perfectly proof for the person who is wearing this one what kind of materials will be using this one some kind of very expensive very flexible polymers lightweight spacecraft lightweight spacecraft are using the rockets which what we are using the thrust where the the fire is coming out of from the rocket it should be lightweight so all these things we are using in our, we are seeing in our everyday life came out all from the use of the innovative ideas of the smart materials. Shape memory brushes, the brush which will hold the shape what we are giving and after some time it will go back to the memory effect and it will get, go back to the, its original brush size or brush effect. So if you take a brush, if you hold, if you fold it or if you bend it, make it into any shape, that time it will make, it will go to the same shape but later on it will come back to the 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 shape which already it has this is called a shape memory brushes bulletproof jacket dye sensitized solar cell where instead of the silicon solar cell what we are using now we are using dyes and nano solar cells nano material based solar cells super capacitors graphene ox based super capacitors or any other kind of different type of materials are there super capacitor means you can Instead of battery from the solar cell, you can hold the power in the supercapacitor. All the battery charge will, instead of battery, the current will be stored in the supercapacitor. So from the supercapacitor, you can take back the energy and you can use it. Integrated supercapacitor, that is different thing. When we see the solar panel, we know that from the solar panel, we are taking current, we are storing the current. We are storing the current in a particular uh, kind of material in the bottom. In normal sense, normal case, we use the, this, we store this current in the battery and this will take a lot of space and a lot of money also is need to be spent there. But integrated supercapacitor, integrated solar cell system, you can store, you can absorb the light energy from the surface and the bottom of the solar panel itself you can store the current. So you don't need battery, additional battery or cost or space to use this current current later. And electric cars, they used high power batteries, electric scooters, then nano material based cloth. Recently, when we know about the, the la recent pandemic, last two years, we all were suffering from the, the attack from coronavirus. And we all were wearing masks and we, in always all the government and all the agencies were saying that you use the double layer mask, triple layer mask. Because of the porosity of the triple layer mask, lo lower porosity, the virus cannot come and penetrate. So some companies came up with the nanofiber based mask. What is the advantage of nanofiber based mask? These right side one, what you are seeing the right side, top right side is 
the wood kind of thing what you are seeing the thicker diameter things is just a human hair just a human hair electron microscope image what we are seeing here the background is a nanofiber which is like just like a coir what we are seeing here is a nanofiber so you can imagine wow, how much small is the nanofiber and the in between each nanofiber there is a very small tiny space which is called the pore so when you are making a nanofiber based mask the virus is feeling difficulty to pass through this very small pore so that that will be useful so when when nanofibers are made that's just an invention when the nanofiber is used to make a mask for preventing coronavirus that is completely an innovation using that technology or idea for a useful thing other things are nanotubes composites for various applications ceramic nanocomposite carbon nanocomposites then spotting goods organic light emitting diodes which can be used for the television screen then chemical sensors these are the so many things which we are going through everyday life and so many things so many researchers are like day to night they are working hard to modify all these things we don't want to go into the details of those studies we just want to see among these things nowadays the recent topic is the nanotechnology based research apart from all these things what is the advantage of nanotechnology based research and what is a nanotechnology what is a nanotechnology it means nano is actually came from a greek word called nanos that means dwarf dwarf means we know what is dwarf what dwarf is very small so it is expected that this word will be as a replica of what we are using in the science a small thing nano so we can see that diameter for our earth is 12756 kilometer the di total diameter when you come to the diameter of a football it is 12 almost 12 centimeter diameter from there if you come to the diameter of an atom it is almost 0.7 nanometer there you can see that it is almost 1 billion times smaller than the size of a football and the size of the football is 10 million times smaller than the diameter of the earth so from there we can see that the importance of nano how small the nano is an atom is 0.7 nanometer okay this picture the one what we are seeing here we have no guess what kind of creature it is in scientific movies in all the places we can see this kind of gigantic creatures which will attack human and everything but do you know what kind of this what creature this is this is just an ant a small red ant we are seeing every day it's the face of an ant and this surf the the face looks like this one since we are not able to see the face this much uh, in the enlarged way and this is actually taken the scanning electron microscope image of an ant and you can see that there are so many very small hair kind of structures on the surface which are all we call a nanotopographic phase this is a lotus leaf we know that when water is falling on the lotus leaf it it is not like spreading away this is like showing hydrophobic nature the lotus leaf the water will like run like in a in a globular form and it will not touch, touch anywhere it will jump away if it is getting a space why this is moving like this this is the scanning electron microscope image of a lotus leaf surface which all has a nano pattern and this nano pattern is not allowing the water molecule to stay in there instead of it showing hydrophobic hygroscope uh, hydrophobic nature so when you compare a nano scale this is a tennis ball it is a 10 rise to so we can say that 10 rise to 0 and 10 rise to 1 nanometer 10 rise to 1 nanometer means 10 nanometer that is an antibody 10 rise to 2 nanometer is 100 nanometer that means a virus size of a virus 10 rise to 3 is a thousand nanometer is a bacteria size then 10 thousand nanometer also we call one micrometer so 10 micrometer is a cancer cell size size like that you got 10 rise to 8 nanometer is a tennis ball size so from here the basic difference you can see that 10 nanometer 
10 raised to 0, 10 raised to 1 nanometer, we can call this 10 nanometer is the size of an antibody. And 1 nanometer is the size of a glucose molecule. And 10 raised to minus 1 nanometer is the size of a water molecule. So here, what we, it's important for us is the size between a virus and a bacteria. Virus is 10 raised to 2 nanometer, that means 100 nanometer. Bacteria is 1 micrometer. That's why we used to say that it's very difficult to hold the virus through normal mask. Just the 100 nanometer size, which will pass through almost all the pores of mask. But bacteria is 1000 nanometer, which can be easily prevented by any small kind, even very small mask. That's why we are, the nanoscale comparison can be used to how to identify the virus and bacteria size. These are different nanoparticles. In the research, nowadays everybody is using, this is a gold nanoparticle and quantum dots, nano capsules, everything. This is a liposome nanoparticle. The C is amphiphilic cyclodextrin. Then D is a dendrimal nanoparticle. Then a, this is a gold nanoparticle. This is a micelle, is also in the nanoform. Carbon nanotubes in the, the nanoform. So many quantum dots, which is less than 10 nanometer size, we call quantum dots. These are the different nanoparticles we use nowadays for nanotechnology use. What are the different uses? One is electronics. Nano transistors we are using, nano diodes we are using, organic light emitting diodes. These are all the application of nanotechnology in electronics. Another one is plasma display, quantum computer, then batteries we are using, all the batteries we have so many nano components, then fuel cells we have nano components, then solar panels, solar cells, there are lots of lots of solar, the nano, nano components. So like we all know about the, the iPhone. Apple's iPhone, very famous, very expensive, and you know that they're the chips. So it's making the chip, making the chip in between the chip, the layer will be two nanometer thickness. They have the technology and this makes the chip very small and a lot of chip you can use in a small sp space of time the place of uh, the mobile phone so that the the speed and much other functions of the mobile phones can be increased that's the advantage of nano so why this nano surface nano is very important because the surface to volume ratio is very high with for very small size the surface area is very high so you can use the adv advantages of the surface area for a large number of application nanotubes you have a nanotube with so much of functionality, you can use this surface area for a lot of applications. Aerogel, you can use nanoparticles in aerogel. The nanoparticles are such we can use. Another one is the use of nanoparticles in drug delivery. We all know about the nanotechnology based drug delivery system. And you should know the basics of the drug delivery system. This is very simple. When we make a nanoparticle, very small particle in very small size in the nano size there are like the sugar we are packing in a in a container sugar we are packing we know that when we put the sugar inside when it is full you still can pack it by shaking the, the you can you can hit it on the surface of the table for some time then the sugar level again will go down it will be packed much much more better and then again you have space for adding sugar again the same way, when you make nanoparticles, in a small area or small volume of space, if the size of the particle is small, you can pack too many number of nanoparticles so that each nanoparticle has a surface area so that the number of nanoparticles increasing in the space unit volume, you can increase the number of nanoparticles compared to a micro particle or a large particle. The advantage is that since the number of particles are increasing, you are getting a lot of space on the surface of this nanoparticle to attach various chemicals. In drug delivery, usually what we do is we take the nanoparticle, we surface functionalize this nanoparticle with various things like magnetic nanoparticles or magnetic materials or proteins, everything you can attach, then you can use this, the whole system to attach on a cancer tumor cells. So these are the drug delivery aspect. Now again, we are like we are going back or we are shrinking down the, our area to 
the nanotechnology how it is can be used for the human body like i mentioned before research in the wide area we cannot explain in not even one day not even one week if very small area only we can elaborate more if we have a specified time period so human body if you look nanotechnology and other technology aspect for the base of human body we call a technology called nano bio research and that means nano materials when we use for biological studies we can call it as a nano bio engineering or nano biotechnology one of the aspects in nano bio engineering or nano biotechnology we called regenerative engineering or we called tissue engineering someone might have heard or you might have heard about the tissue culture tissue culture uh, banana tree it's not that then this is the tissue which is a tissue of our body is engineering engineering or fabricating a tissue in our body and these tissues collectively we make it as an organ and use this organ in your body so what are the organs in our body human body composed of so many things skin pancreas embryonic stem cells are there tendons are there muscles we have eyes bladders are there blood vessels there bone is there gums are there cartilage is there nerves are there mesenchymal cardiac muscles are brain is there liver so many organs composed together to get or that's a collection of so many organs our human body how a nanotechnology based research can be used for the better living environment of a human so we can use nanoparticles in different forms as nanoparticles nano fibers nano composite nano composite so so many things are there this is like the first slide i have shown a nano bio engineered mice that means an organ which is our ear made in the shape of ear and implanted on the back side of a mice and the mice is growing along with this this ear ear is staying there ear is live ear has live cells all the ear is made up of live cells so this is the effect of a nano bio if you can make an ear you can make anything in our body this is called the process of tissue engineering or regenerative engineering how you can make an organ using research using nano materials the first first thing what we are doing is we need to have a material yes is matrix which for we are using three different kind of things for making artificial organs from nanotechnology or nanobiotechnology first we need the cell of what kind of organ you have to make you need that kind of cell second you need a environment for the cells to grow and third you need a matrix or a place the cells can grow then someone raise the hand do you have any question hello neelima hello uh, maybe maybe it's a mistake uh, by mistake okay. yeah. and then you have cell now you have the growing medium for the cell now we need a matrix for the cells to grow because we are talking about a tissue engineering we are talking about the artificial organ which is not 100 percentage original in nature it is artificial so that it has to match with the it has to be placed along with the natural part so that after some time the matrix has to disappear and cell has to become the part of the organ so we need to have a matrix we call it scaffold and in that scaffold we can add the cell and then we can allow it to grow for some time in a growing medium in a culture plate petri plate then we give all the environments required for that particular organ to grow then finally this will have all the properties of that organ and then we can implant into the specific area of that particular organ in a human body this is called tissue engineering or regenerative engineering use the cell so for example if we are looking to make a part of our bond we have to take a cell which is similar to the cells in our natural bond then we have to find out a medium like for us we have we need food to live for the cells also it need some nutrients and growth factors 
for the cells to grow so we have to make a medium liquid medium which will all the which will have all the new ingredients and nutrients so that it will can die it can consume this this medium and it can grow then you make the organ basically the components there are components are scaffold or matrix then surface factors we called the growth factors then precursors we call the cells then we, we mix together so this is an integrated implantable or injectable device that means once you make a polymer based scaffold then once you make take the proper cells then make make the proper environment for that particular cell to grow in that polymer then you allow the cells to grow for a long time and wait for some time then these cells will grow and spread inside and will start to show the properties of a particular organ then you can take it and implant in your in your body wherever it is required this is called reverse engineering some examples are there these are the injectable cements some are injectable bond cement nanofiber membranes hydrogels and cryogels multi scale fibrous yarns anti adhesive membranes microsphere nano composite partial nanofibers biodegradable bond pins and plates a lot and lot of varieties of materials nano materials based things are there for our human body first one you can see that the injectable cement which is for bond if your bond is broken if your bond has some problem then inject as a liquid form and inject into your bond so that it will fill inside and later on this liquid become solid inside the bond and this bond this solid material will show the properties of the your original bond and the bond problem will be solved we know that some 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 ladies who grow 60 years or older or something then they are very prone to the breakage of bond when they fall down easily their bonds are breaking the reason the bond is getting osteoporosis osteoporosis means leaching of calcium from your hand your bond so that means calcium is completely leaching out of the system of the bond and from the food not enough calcium production is not happening in that case you have to give in additional calcium content to your bond not only from the food otherwise the bond will be keep on breaking this is called osteoporosis See, we have injectable bond cements for those kind of system inject it so that the bond will be filled then those these are the nanofiber the bond screws like i mentioned before use this material for as a normal screw for your bond breakage then it will dissolve back so there are lots and lots of varieties of systems working so first we will go through the bonds or joints and teeth we have a lot of options to make the bonds from different materials first we will see look about the the bond is made from nanofiber what we are seeing here these are the nanofibers nanofibers polymeric nanofibers we can add the calcium mineral into the nanofiber then you can make it into three dimensional format and you can implant you can keep in the bond space where the bond has some damage so it will grow back as normal bond this is nanofiber based bond regeneration another one is you can make three dimensional scaffolds these are the what you are seeing in the right hand side in the red color these are the nanofiber embedded nanofiber matrix made in the different different shapes so that you can use for any shape for uh bond this is called made up of through through electro spinning process and these are the images we can see that after you make the nanofiber based structure this will go inside and once you see the cells cells can grow perfectly inside this nanofiber system and this will clearly give you a system this will clearly give you a system with perfect bond regeneration capacity this is an injectable polymeric bond cement another system injectable system we can have this left hand side what you are seeing is a healthy bond and right hand side is a osteoporotic bond that means there is there are spaces so injectable system will give a total solution for your bond problem next one is the tendons and ligaments we know about tendon most of the time for all the sports sports athletes and everywhere everyone they usually they have the tendon breakage or ligament breakage that means this is one of the biggest tendon in our body biggest uh, uh, this got achilles tendon this achilles tendon is it is breaking then it's very difficult for to the for the same person to move 
in the previous way. Their career is gone actually. What happens is tendons are very slow regenerating organs, not like our skin. Skin, if we have a burn, if we have a cut, after two or three days, our skin joins back. Our if we have a surface burn, the skin will <coughs> the burned skin will go out in one week, new skin will come back, but not the case in tendon. Tendon will not grow that much faster. So once it is broken, the doctors will do the parallel suturing. That means not to the two ends of the broken ends. Instead of two broken ends, they will keep both in parallel and they will suture back. So that there will be a reduction in the length of the tendon. That will become uh, difficult for a person to move. So we can make artificial tendons. Instead of end to end, we can make very strong material using polycaprolactone or any other material in the yarn form, then you can use it as a tendon to make regeneration. These are some examples of nanofiber based tendons for making artificial tendon and growing back. These are the commercial tendon graft, which commercially we are using in, uh, in the hospitals for the same problem. This is a tendon rupture what we are hearing, seeing here. So instead of parallel suturing, by joining the two things parallel, we can use the end-to-end -end suturing using one some cross strong materials. So what we are seeing that commercial tendon graft here is actually they have microfibers. They don't have any cell growing capacity so that this will not grow back at as a normal tendon. But if you use a biodegradable nanomaterial based tendon, this material will degrade into your body same time the tendon will grow back as normal tendon and these are the some images of confocal microscope that means the confocal microscope will give you some fluorescent images of cell so all the cells we seeded here and this seeded cells you can see as a con the, the the fluorescent images so that we can make sure that the cells these structures are with cells and these are the different uh, examples of how tendons are made and another thing is Anti-adhesive membranes. Anti-adhesive membranes is like the anti-adhesive membranes also we can use for the tendon as a wrapping agent so that the pain and adhesion can be prevented. Another one is a vascular graft or blood vessel can be made from nanotechnology based materials. We call it tubular vascular graft. So whatever the tubular structure we need, our vascular graft also inside we have aligned structure. These kind of shapes using nanofibers and the shape of a tube can give the better growth of a vascular graft in human body. If the vascular graft is cut, we know about some, like you might have heard about the intestines has some problem and we put the plastic intestine. And plastic intestine will stay in our body for until our death. And these plastic intestines are very inert so that there will have so many problems because digestion problems everything will not be working so we will have so many problems so if you use regenerative things that means the material what we are using will allow the original one to grow back to the previous function and shape which will be more helpful these are called anti-adhesive membranes which are made from some kind of hyaluronic acid material what is an anti-adhesive membrane it's like when we are undergoing some kind of surgery, especially the open surgery, like intestine or peritoneal, like, like cesarean, if something, if you open the things and if the organ is opened and when it is suturing back, later on, this will cause the, some fibroblasts to come and adhere on the surface. And whenever we are moving after the surgery, even after a long time after surgery, we will have a pain feeling, a pulling effect from inside our body. We In, in, in Malayalam, we used to call valichil. The volatile feeling we are getting. So this effect can be avoided by using some kind of membrane which will prevent the adhesion of these fibroblasts so that the pain and this this pulling feeling will not be there. This kind of surgery like cesarean and on the intestine we can keep. What you are seeing here in the post-surgical peritoneal adhesion on the right hand side top image is what is called the, the fibroblast adhesion. Or this will stay there for a very long time and we won't have any kind of remedy for this one until you are using a membrane for this one. And these are the 
different types of strain. Another one is nerve constrict. Uh, pardon. Is there any outside sound is coming or disturbing in my presentation? Hello? No, no, no. Nothing is that okay? Because yes. yeah, we no. have some programs no. started outside. No, no, okay. nothing is here. Come okay. okay. Another one is a nerve construct. How you can make a nerve, artificial nerve, from a polymeric material through research. And we know that nerve is also a tubular structure. Nerve has some conductivity. Electrical signals has to pass through the nerve if we want to have a nerve function. We know that when someone, we used to hear that some accident or someone falling from the top. And if our, our, our spinal cord has some damage, then we are getting paralyzed. We are not able to walk. The reason is through the spinal cord, we call the central nervous system. The central nerve is passing through. And from the central nerve, all the peripheral nerves are passing to our outside body. So when the central nerve has some breakage, that means the signals, passage, conductions, all the information is cut. So that's why if you have, if you have a burn, if your hand is paralyzed, and if your finger has a burn, we are not feeling the sense because the burning sensation, that information from our peripheral nerves are there in our finger and these finger will give the, will pass the information of burning to our nerve, through the nerve to our brain. But while it's going through our spinal cord, since there is a breakage in the spinal cord, central nervous system, the information stopped there. It cannot transfer to our brain. So we don't have any sensing feeling. So if you can restore that breakage point connection, then we can, the person who is not able to walk, can move back. They can come back to their, their, their previous life. But it's not that easy, especially the tendon regeneration and nerve regeneration is not that easy because none of the polymeric artificial material is well enough to act as the same nerve property as a human body has but up to a max certain extent we can give some conducting property to the material and allow this to pass through so we are using polycaparal actor conducting material like silver nanoparticles we can give and we can give the nerve growth factors all the components for a nerve we can give and we can grow in the laboratory laboratory culture and then we can transfer it to a human body this nerve will act as up to a certain extent, it will act as a normal nerve and try to pass the information through the breakpoint. This one is a skull bone. Once the skull bone is broken, how to make the skull bone back? We know that if our hand or leg has some breakage, we can put plaster paris or something. It will be restored back, not much problem. But if our skull is broken, it's not that easy because inside is a brain. So we need to be careful in handling those kind of things so there you need to have different strategy than we what a bone is breaking in our leg or hand in that case we have to take a three-dimensional shape of this material and also there is another layer underneath our like our tender coconut our brain our head is also almost similar to a tender coconut how this is looking like like our brain inside our head tender coconut has tender coconut water inside and outside of this water tender coconut water we have white slurry part of that flesh of that coconut same way our brain also has a covering like this tender coconut slurry part and above that slurry part we have hard shell for we call charita outside and we have our skull bone the problem is when the skull bone is broken, this tender coconut kind of thing underneath the skull bone in the human body, human head is also damaged. And that layer is actually giving maximum strength and maximum protection for our brain. Once this is broken, you have to artificially make not only the bone part, but you have to make that. We call that layer as a dura. That also you have to regenerate. So if you are... So there are two phases of two kinds of tissues together. One is a hard bone part and another one is the soft dura part. So if you are able to make 
a tissue which has two different components that we call biphasic tissue. Those also made from biodegradable polymers and biocompatible polymers. One will be hard nanocomposite, one will be soft biodegradable polymer to mimic or to re re reproduce these two different systems. And others are heart valves. We use polytetrafluoroethylene for making heart valves, damaged heart valves, weakened or arterial valves, silicon rubber also used for these things. Uh, we know about a center called Sri Jitra Thirunal Institute of Medical Science and Technology in Trivandrum. They are actually very famous for making a suitable, cost-effective ar uh, artificial heart valve long back and they made it patent and they made it into a product and a lot of people are still using that heart valves with very less cost. In the beginning, it was more than a lakh when we have to import from abroad. But now this is in the affordable hands or affordable rate of even a normal uh, common man can afford this kind of all. So these are generated, all these generated from the nano-based or non-nano-based uh, polymer, biodegradable polymeric based research. And this is an artificial heart completely made up of artificial materials which will completely function as an artificial heart. But you have to remember one thing, none of these things are the same effect, or some same efficiency as the original one. We are trying to improve maximum what we don't have in our, we have a damage in your heart. If heart has a damage or if your valve has a damage, instead of there is no valve or there is no effect from the absence of this this part we are trying to improve by giving our artificial one and there are so many challenges i don't want to go to the challenges so those are things like vascularity the, the growth of bio, the blood vessels and uh, enough uh, getting material for this one especially cost then designing this specified structure and also the rejection from our body these are the challenges and other things are like making contact lenses then artificial kidney these are all made from different different uh, protein engineered or artificial biofunctionalized materials and these are the examples of some tissue engineered bladders tissue engineered scaffolds and artificial polyglycolic acid based surgical sutures which will degrade in your body very long time so this is just now about all about the biodegradable system this is not the complete list but just a part for your understanding now i just would like to help those students who has wish to have or who, those who wish to do some research in this kind of areas how to go and find out this research these are not you know you don't need to be a superhuman to get into this kind of research just proper planning and executing time you can get into this one for example if you have a graduation degree you have a bsc degree if you want to go for research, you can go for integrated PhD program that is five years. Or you can go for PG. And after PG, you can either opt for a research job or you can go for a junior research fellowship, senior research fellowship, project fellowship, research assistantship. Or you can from PG, you can go for a PhD and PhD have multiple options. So these are different institutions in India. IIT, Indian Institute of Technologies are there. NITs are there, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR labs there, DST, Department of Science and Technology labs there, Department of Biotechnology labs are there, Indian Council of Medical Research labs there, DRDO labs, IS, ISRO is there, Baba Atomic Research Center, National and Central Universities are there, State Universities there, Private and DMD University. There are so many options you have if you want to go for a research job. And you have a, a plenty of eligibility criteria there. You have to like meet any one of the criteria, you can get into this one. One is a gate exam, another one is a net clearance, national eligibility test, then CSIR, UGC exam, then in ICAR exams are there, then Prime Minister Fellowship is there, then DST, INSPIRE Fellowship is there, that also you can go for a research project, then the uh, Department Aptitude Test, that is DAT exam by several universities are doing DAT exams, then institution specific exams are there, Autonomous institutes have their own exams or walk-in interviews or interviews you can directly enroll there and there are so many government approved research centers. So the higher the your score, this easier is your reach 
that's the basic model. And these are the some premier institute, IASD Bangalore, IIT Delhi, CSIR Institutes, Central University of Hyderabad, then I nice or Bhuvaneshwar. This is just a representative image I am trying to put. It's not all, it's not even a percentage, it's a small percentage of the whole thing. There are a lot. And there are 31 NITs in India. And these are different options. Even in Kerala, there is CSIR, NIST, Trivandrum is there. IAI, ISR is there, Trivandrum. ISRI is there. Then I, Indian Institute of Space Technology is there. Then you have Srijitra Institute of Medical Science there, University of Kerala, my MG University, then Kerala, Kerala University is there. Then um, uh, Calicut University is there, Kannur University. There are a lot, Kochi University is there, a lot and lot of options you have there. In case if you are planning for an international level study or like outside India and Asian countries, you can give preference for Japan, Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan and including China also you can give the preference. And other things in the Europe, Australia, the New Zealand, South America, USA, Canada, these are all options. And these are the probable universities for you in abroad, in the higher ranking wise, Stanford, then a National University of Singapore, University of Cambridge, uh, MIT is there, University of California, Berkeley is there, University of uh, Toronto, ETS, Zurich. A lot, a lot of funding opportunities also there, which will help you go for uh, studies abroad. That is a DAD by Germany. European Commission, Marie Curie Fellowship is there. Then Max Planck Fellowship is there. If you want to do in PhD in USA, is a great trans. What you need is a great certificate, curriculum vitae then GRE score, TOEFL exam. These are other possibilities like social networking site for PhD opportunity. That is one is a research gate or LinkedIn, job.ac.uk, findaphd.com, nature careers, your access, science careers. These are all the social networking platforms for finding PhD as well as a research job if student is interested. These are the major fellowships available in India for doing PhD. I don't want to go through all each and everything. The Prime Minister's Fellowship is there. CSIR UGC Fellowship, DGST, DBT, GR Fellowship, FITM, Ayush, SARC. So there are so many and these organizations, most of them by either deemed universities or some good private institutions or most of them are by bilateral between India and some other countries or completely under government of India. And these are the application deadlines by them. Then. International fellowships you can go for a lot, provided by different countries, including Japan, in UK, USA, Canada, Switzerland. So many are there. International fellowships. Korean government is there. Germany is there. Then uh, combined one like IIT Bombay, Monash University program, Deakin University, Ken University, Fiji and Normal University, Imperial College London. There are lots and lots of options are there for you if you want to go for a research job. So these are the possibilities and options not end here. This is just a sample of information about what you can do in research, how you can do the research, what are the possible research areas and out of the topic or out of the box, how a nano biomaterial based work is doing for a research aspect. And finally, how a research student can identify a place for research fellowship and abroad and in India, what are the options? These are uh, the things I would like to present for you, uh, for your information. And thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for your very much comprehensive and enriching presentation. It was a pleasure to hear you, sir. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, you have dealt in detail about the innovations uh, which we use in our daily life. You vividly highlighted each and every innovation to your, uh, in your presentation, right from brushing our teeth, the brush. And uh, you also took us to the details of uh, nanotechnology. So that was also very interesting uh, to hear from you, sir. You also shared with us the various innovations uh, which are recently available and uh, to the human body as well. And lastly, you also touched upon the employment opportunities uh, which can be, uh, which, uh, which, which is for the, available for the students uh, 
uh, who opt for the science stream and what how they can enter the science stream by doing their graduation pg and mphil phd and which all institutes are there especially doing research in science all over india and even abroad also you shared uh, various information so much sir for sharing all this details it was always a pleasure to hear you uh, i would also like to and share one more uh, thing that uh, this lecture is being held as a part of the national science day celebration national science day which is being held tomorrow that is uh, february 28th uh, is celebrated as the national science day uh, to mark the discovery of the raman effect by indian physicist cv raman uh, so that is one information which i thought i would like to share with all of you so thank you so much sir for your uh, very enriching presentation now we open this uh, uh, session for discussions and for comments uh, from other uh, resource persons we also have with us our uh, regional director of uh, regional center vadagara uh, rajesh dr m rajesh uh, sir if you could uh, comment on the session please uh, thank you ma'am thank you uh, <laughs> thank you uh, prasida ma'am thank you um, uh, doroti ma'am thank you jalja ma'am for uh, and uh, thank you uh, dr vijay raghavan for uh, the kind uh, invitation that you have given me to attend this program uh, first and foremost let me appreciate the depth at which uh, dr shalimon has dealt with this issue area it has been really wonderful uh, starting from uh, the very basics he has uh, gone on to something more comprehensive then more comprehensive and at the end he has also dealt with the various research areas which are available in this field that is a very comprehensive coverage for a program which is rather short in time and i should uh, compliment and congratulate dr uh, shalimon for the wonderful effort he has made and uh, this presentation i'm sure is uh, something of a boon for all students who are pursuing the science stream or even others who wish to pursue uh, something in the field of science later on also so i am uh, sure this will be of great benefit to all people all students especially uh, and uh, definitely i'm sure um, with the kind of expertise that dr shalimon has at his uh, um, behest we will uh, hear more and more of him in the years to come and it, uh, let me congratulate him on being the ramalingam fellow uh, and which is a very prestigious achievement uh, for any academician in this country uh, just a couple of thoughts and uh, maybe uh, you can uh, uh, dr shalimon can also uh, 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 add to uh, 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 the points that he has already made uh this uh, i am basically i am uh, not from the science stream i am in uh, novice in the field of science but uh, from the little bit of understanding that i have from uh, various media sources and all that uh, you have dealt with this very important area of uh, nano biotechnology and i'm sure uh, it is one of the key areas where uh, further development is going to take place in the field of science uh, first and foremost i would like to know um, uh, i think there are certain uh, Uh, defense applications to uh, nano uh, biotechnology recently i was coming across uh, uh, an article in which uh, it was uh, stated that even mice they have been uh, in fact uh, implanted with uh, micro uh, lenses or micro cameras uh, which could actually uh, with which they could actually uh, penetrate into the areas where terrorists or anti social elements are stationed and they could uh, then uh, retrieve uh, data or transmit data back to uh, uh, the source uh, I, i would uh, like to know if some such research uh, is actually taking place in india and maybe uh, in uh, areas uh, uh, which are closely associated with you the second one is uh, i think more generic in nature uh, there is a lot of uh, debate these days on uh, the aspect of cell regeneration uh, working towards aspects such as age reversal and all that i'm sure uh, a lot of uh, research is going on in the west also regarding uh, how to um, in fact um, uh, reverse our aging and make uh, make uh, all of us very youthful maybe by uh, once we reach 40s we can go back to our uh, 20s or uh, 15s and uh, maybe we can uh, then regenerate uh, work once again for more and more years together is nanotechnology uh, and nano biotechnology actually playing a role in this field uh, i would like to know about that also and uh, third one is quite outlandish like um, this is uh, something uh, maybe <laughs> which does uh, does not fit in the field of science fiction there is this concept of parallel universe and all that and there you have uh, this concept of uh, nanoparticles playing a major role 
uh, uh, can you uh, just apprise me of uh, uh, the current position of research as far as this very important aspect is concerned? Because there is a lot of debate in quantum mechanics that uh, parallel universe is possible, not possible. But uh, one thing that lies at the core of all this debate, uh, from whatever I have read, is the concept of nanoparticles, which change their form again and again. And that makes uh, this uh, concept of parallel universe plausible. If no, I, I'm not talking about the possibility, maybe plausible. So may, uh, these are some random thoughts that come to my mind. If you could kindly uh, enlighten me on that, I would be grateful. Okay, sir, I will, I will try my level best to answer your questions uh, from my knowledge level. The first of all, the defense mechanism you have mentioned, um, uh, the animal implantation, is actually we usually do in the large animal models those if you need for a large organ replacement or large organ study we used to go above rabbit size but a couple of things are there difficult for us here first is a facility here because if you want to do an animal study one a small if you if you make a small bond pin at least you need to have study this one on at least 16 rabbits or maybe 20 rabbits you have to study if even if it's just a small pit even if a very small part because then only the real animal study result you can predict based on the uh, the number of experiments so that is one thing second if you want to do on 16 rabbits you need to have a very large animal facility with the surgeons with you doctors with you so that those are the the practical or I means financial side of the difficulty for us to do this one but the science side we can say that majority of the animals will try if you are putting a, a foreign body uh, like an you know, implant in, in, the, in the animal like uh, usually when we put try to implant an organ tissue engineered organ in a rabbit the case is different because we take for example we are trying to regenerate a bond so we will make the sample first with the rabbit bond rabbit cells then we will grow the rabbit cells in the bond part then we'll open the rabbit's bond and we will keep it back there so the rabbit's immune system will detect this rabbit cell his own system so it will not reject back but at the same time when you are trying to put one camera inside this has no cells nothing so it is completely a foreign body so the immune system will keep on rejecting this one and the chance of success will be very low so you need to go for the immunocompromised mice that means the mice we call nude mice uh, the in the picture i have shown is the nude mice which has no hair they don't have immune cells these cells whatever you put in the body it will stay there without any trouble because there is no immune cells so no rejection mechanism maybe for mice this can be done but i'm not sure this mice is not only for since they don't have immune system they are very much prone for all the diseases so they usually kept in sterile conditions for all the research purpose animal purpose with all the sterile air filter everything so i'm not sure about how this non-tissue engineered material can be kept in the animal body for long time maybe very short period of time we can use it and then we have to operate and take it back but for long period of time i think there will be an immune problem and Ultimately, this may lead to the death of the animal. And that's a question number one. Uh, but surely I will look into that defense because, because I also i am very crazy about reading those kind of things. I will surely look into those, those kind of works. Uh, second one, you were asking about the, the age reversal. Age reversal uh, cells, usually how we preserve cells are, is you kept in a very small while actually. And crores and crores of cells will be kept there then we used to keep it in liquid nitrogen tanks which is minus 178 degrees Celsius minus so this will be frozen so whenever we start to do experiment we take the vial back and we will slowly we will increase the temperature we call thawing not sudden temperature change so slow temperature change we will give so that it will come back to the room temperature then we will keep it in the growing medium so the cells will grow back and these cells can grow and multiply and finally it can become any tissue it would like to burn. But we know that when the cells are a club of cells, we call it a tissue. A bunch of tissues we call an organ. And a combination of so many organs is a human body. 
whenever a cells we are taking and keep it in liquid nitrogen it is frozen it's like hibernating and when you keep it back to the growing medium it is again live still when a bunch of cells that's a human body when we keep it back in the liquid nitrogen and when we keep it back the growing medium we are still dead that science still need to develop i i really i was also thinking the same because previously my my postdoc to boss was asking me the same you take a bunch of cells which you can make in hand and take a dead hand a dead person's hand remove all the proteins and everything and make the whole hand with the whole cells of your body and grow it back to the the normal hand and keep it in your uh, those person who has amputated hands but still even that level sir is not difficult is not able to come back to a making a hand eh, the whole limb so uh, i think maybe according to the developments in current science in 2023 it's not possible the bringing back the life back to the the human but i think something may be possible later on because these technologies like we were not knowing about the cell phones even 15 years before 15 years before we never know that we can do the video calling in a cell phone so uh, i am i am i'm sure that all these troubles will be overtaken soon because of uh, like e- whatever the difficulties are that will be overtaking soon but that's one of the reasons the embryos are rich people are even keeping the embryos in liquid nitrogen banks so that they can use this liquid nitrogen bank and this embryos turn back to the cells and this is like solve any diseases but still i heard in newspaper also that some very rich person is like their final wish they are saying that their body should be kept in frozen condition so that whenever the technology develops the age reversal may come back age reversal may come maybe they will come back to life we don't know still i also don't know sir for ask that is this question in fact, in fact uh, the, there is one uh, small intervention that i would like to make uh, i read somewhere that uh, um, uh, near this japanese coast uh, there is a special category of uh, jellyfish i suppose which uh, actually has the ability to regenerate its own organs even if you uh, cut it into pieces yeah actually salamander also do have the same yeah so all the regenerative engineering scientists starts all their work based on the mechanism on salamander but salamander's mechanism is completely different from human the human cells so it's totally impossible with the current technology and knowledge to do the same as what salamander is doing salamander if they are losing one limb it's automatically growing back yeah but the same thing is not happening on human because of the genetic mechanism exactly. so right now Uh, tissue engineering is actually not working anything with the genetic mechanism we are directly going the cellular mechanism and growing the cell to that particular organ exactly. and do the needful for those who are suffering from pain like exactly. organ organ based pain and third one uh, actually i don't know about those parallel universe and all i know about nanoparticles based research is very much helpful in not only for uh, biological studies even non biological studies also it's very helpful but i know about some aspect of the cancer because whenever we are functionalizing nanoparticle surface with some kind of drug for cancer therapy for a particular tumor cell this tumor cell surface has receptors all tumor cell has some kind of receptor it's like a kind of uh, 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 coronavirus has some structure spines these receptors when we make nanofiber we will make some bio biomolecules which can directly attach on the receptor on the cancer cell so when we design the nanoparticle when this is coming as a real product in your body by the time that cell will change the mechanism chemical mechanism of this receptor so when we design that time this has one type of mechanism when it is really going to apply on the tumor already the cell has changed the mechanism of that that receptor so the nanoparticle and drug cannot attach and affect you on this one that's the main reason the cancer research is not we are not getting a 100 percentage effective drug till now so we need to do something in that aspect as a parallel universe so that definitely this can work 100 percent efficient for human thank you thank you so, so much thank you for the clarification and uh, once again congratulations for the wonderful session
Yeah, someone yeah. else. There is one Manu, Manu Vijay was raising his hand. Is that? Sir, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, So actually, sir, you have told that uh, that uh, regenerative cells, uh, which is uh, attached on the mice body, that air totally it has been produced. Uh, it is a regeneration. That stem cell, stem, stem cell mechanism you have told. Uh, yeah. So whether this this artificially produced air, it can be uh, uh, carried to the uh, this mice offspring, offspring. Sorry, mice. Of offspring, of offspring. No, no. What I am telling. Oh. This artificially uh, induced the air. Yeah. By using the stem cell. Yeah. Which will be carried forward. To the next generation of the mice. Uh, actually, those images where they have shown that these kind of organ transplantation, organ production is possible. It's not completely functional here. They made an ear-shaped substrate, some plastic, any kind of plastic or something kind of that. Then you made a substrate. Then they add the stem cells inside that one and put it on the. Uh, the back side of the ear, the, the mice. So in our case, if if that because that was a human ear. So human ear, if you have to, that's only for human. So if someone has lost their ear, then we need to take the stem cells from the same person and we need to make the ear, the whole component of ear. Our ear, the edge part of the ears are made up of cartilage cells. Yeah. The yeah. In, inner parts are made up of our small muscle cells. Yeah. So there are a lot of lots. Then we have skin cells. Lot and lot of varieties of different mechanisms, complex mechanisms are in our ear. The 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 scientists actually they just want to show that this kind of mechanism is possible because they just that's why they just showed this on the backside of the mice. They couldn't show this on a human. Yeah. Because making it into a human ear by implanting on this one is much more difficult feat. Because you have to reproduce each and everything of this human hair, like skin scale. Whenever you're making that ear, the inner side should be muscle cells. The flexible part should be cartilage cells. Then outer side should be skin cells. Accordingly, we need to have that same kind of substrate mechanism to make that whole human ear. So it's not 100% working, but still tissue engineered materials are working up to an extent. The only difficult part side with this one is these are all made up of biodegradable materials and we don't know how much time we need to make an ear complete part of this one and biodegradable part need to degrade so when the biodegradable parts are degrading same time the other cells everything has to grow back and become the real ear so those parts are still underway on the way, that's what I'm saying. This is a completely new and hot area of nanotechnology in biomedical science. So even yeah. in India, we don't have many, much many people and much many come. We don't have much many companies working on this area because of yeah. the facilities required for these kind of experiments is extreme high. We need just for a small experiment. We need cross and cross of experiment, ex equipments and facilities and animal facilities, doctors, everything. So that's one part but not to the hundred percentage but to a certain extent it's still done but we hope this will be hundred percent done soon so it is stated that uh, however that the manipulated thing genetically manipulated uh, by using the stem cell it cannot be carried forward to the next generation of the mice that's my, my, my uh, main question genetically modified yeah uh, anything genetically modified by using the stem cell, it it, it can be uh, carried forward to the next generation. That is my question. Yes, it I can think... be. It can be. Yeah. But not okay. right now. We don't have hundred percent. Like for for example, solar cell. We have solar cell. We have working solar cell everywhere in our house, but the efficiency is just eighteen percentage. Okay. That means eighty-two percentage of the sunlight is still wasting. That's why we have this much bigger, very bigger solar cell for just three kilowatt. 
if we can make 100% efficiency we just need a suitcase size of solar panel making same 3 kilowatt the same way this concept this is like a flagship model the concept is working up to a certain extent but need oh. more and more thorough studies maybe this will come back maybe we, nobody knows what will happen after 25 years <coughs> very, very useful very useful thank you sir thank you very much we have a layman doubt i don't know whether it is a good or bad I, you know that i am not a uh, science person but i am asking you this will be hopefully we can implement in the uh, organ generation of transgenders no is it possible stem cell research yeah i, I have in i never thought about this aspect but uh, functional awesome. organs uh, usually okay Huh? Yeah. Ah. Regenerate your tissue engineering basic concept is repair the damaged part of already existing organ. That's the main concept of regenerative engineering. Regenerating not the whole thing. Whole thing is possible, but the major concept is damaged part. Like bone, if it is breaking, just a thin number of normal it will break breaking. I think we can just give plaster Paris coating. It will stay, but it will go by heal back. But if it is a multiple fracture, some part of the bone is gone, then the bone will never go into refill that area. That will be like an empty. For example, if some accident happens, a part of our body flesh is gone. That side later on, we can see that it is like just like a like a small lump is there or. This is one kuri ball or a karakanda we can make. After those, the regenerative engineering, the major concept is fill those damaged part, whether it is a small size or bigger size, and the higher extent making a totally artificial organ. But that has so many challenges because re repairing a part always you will have a help from the existing part of that organ. The existing part will give all the support to the the. Prepared part, what we are giving artificially, but as such, whole organ we are making this in science aspect till now not that much uh, development is there, but up to certain extent it is still there. So in that case, if the whole tran uh, organ transplantation has to be done, then maybe not soon, but later on, this may be possible. Okay. 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 Okay, I was just thinking of that. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Uh, sir, may I ask a doubt? Yeah. Uh, sir, actually, I'm a uh, in, uh, I'm uh, studying on uh, cellulose nanofibers uh, as a part of my project, final year project. Uh, sir, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Hello. Sure, sure. Yes. 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 Uh, uh, sir, uh, I want to know uh, that uh, what are the new strategies to alter or calibrate the properties of uh, this uh, cellulose nano nanofiber so that we can use it in different applications like uh, uh, energy storage or uh, uh, like uh, some something like that, sir. Yeah, yeah understood. Yeah. Actually, cellulose nanofiber. Many people try to use it as a. Uh, like alternative for even making uh, lightweight walls for buildings, cellulose nanofibers. The one of the problem in my understanding for cellulose nanofibers is it's uh, actually it is not soluble in none of the things, right? Solubility is very difficult. Yes, sir. Yeah, cellulose nanofibers. If it has some kind of reactivity, we can do any functionalization and change the properties. For example, our nylon. Something like nylon, the reactivity they are like inert is difficult. And another thing is the cost. Cost-wise, this nanofibers we have other options to make cost-effective things than cellulose nanofibers. So I don't know much details about cellulose nanofibers, but these are the things I know. Its uh, processing is difficult, I know. And uh, beyond that, I don't have much knowledge about cellulose nanofibers. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Because cellulose nanofibers are not degradable. Yeah, but uh, uh, actually, 
I have uh, learned about uh, doping method and com- making a composite of that. Uh, so yeah. my actually my topic is uh, the cellulose to use it in uh, energy storage devices. Like uh, we can use it in uh, uh, use it in uh, batteries as electrode uh, like that. So uh, so I'm uh, asking something means uh, which is different from uh, this uh, doping and uh, making a composite are uh, some uh, used methods. So is there any uh, new strategies to alter some multi- material properties like thermal property, uh, mechanical and chemical stability like that? First of all, uh, doping means you as you said you mentioned about uh, composite making. So usually it's not on the surface or chemical structure of the cellulose nanofiber is changing. Actually, composite means an additional polymer, additional material is coming in between. So we know about the biodegradable plastic kit carry bag. So it's not actually the plastic is making some surface functionalization. In between the plastic, some biodegradable material we are adding. So that when the biodegradable material is breaking, this plastic also getting broken down. So cellulose nanofibers you can add as uh, what you mentioned is cellulose nanofiber is still not degradable, but you are adding some degradable things into this one and mixing and making like a like what we are making putta and vira. So putta thenga pira mix idu ganjala, ado rikil putta put aripadi aripadi item thenga pira thenga pira into thenga rakha. But as a whole thing together we can say that. It's a combination. So when whatever happens to the Engapira, put will break. This is what happening to this uh, your cellulose nanofiber system also. If biodegradable system is in inside that system, if that is degrading, the other system is breaking down. But actually that is cellulose is not degrading. It's just breaking down because the other systems are breaking down. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have our coordinator of SH College uh, Study Center of IGNO, Sri Tom Vargis, sir. I know Tom, sir. sir do you... I know, sir. Uh-huh. Hi, sir. Yeah. Sir, I hope you remember me. We talked here, our department, many times. <laughs> sir, sir, do you want to ask Tom Vargis, sir? sir? Sir, please unmute, sir. I am very happy. Okay, okay, okay. I am very happy about it. All the best. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Dorothy, madam? Yes, yeah, ma'am. I was listening to the entire conversation. I'm grateful to sir uh, for uh, giving concern to be with us and uh, deliberating including the national science presentation and articulation. And uh, we'll be uploading this video also in our YouTube channel and Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dorothy, madam. Now I request uh, uh, Vijay. Can we wind up the session, ma'am? Then. Okay. So now I request uh, uh, our uh, assistant regional director, Dr. S. Vijay Raghavan, to kindly deliver the vote of thanks. Vijay Raghavan, sir. Thank you, madam. So it's a very good lecture which he has given by our. Uh, uh, Dr. Salamon, sir, Assistant Professor, Devara College. So, this lecture very much useful uh, and also it has a lot of information about the innovation as well as discovery. So, innovation, particularly in the nanotechnology, has given a uh, lot of uh, slides which has more information. Uh, particularly, it is on the medical field. How the nanotechnology has been applied for the medical field for betterment of the human uh, life. So it is very good, useful. I think uh, his research should be carried forward in future in a better invention in the field of nanotechnology. So we are very happy 
to hear his uh, uh, presentation and also i thankful to uh, our regional director madam dr dodi and also our regional director from rc vatagra dr rajesh sir and uh, my colleagues uh, dr vt jalanj kumari ad and uh, dr prithida punnikrishna ad and all the participants from the uh, various uh, uh, study centers as well as our regional center staff thank you thank you very much uh, for uh, coming to this presentation thank you, thank you. yeah thank, thank you very much for thanks to everyone for this opportunity thank you very much yeah very much thankful once again from my side i am telling valare nannayirunnu valare informative aayirunnu vare sandosham nan endayalum definitely we will publicize this in our youtube and many of our students will be benefited from that and we hope they will feel that they have missed this session actually yes <laughs> sir Thank you, thank you. Ah, that we will circulate it. We will compensate it. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you, thank you. Actually, we, we had recording. a college meeting. I just missed. I need to go back to there. Okay. We have a staff meeting. Uh, ah, okay. It was supposed to be at the four o'clock, but it's already four to four thirty. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank okay. you. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. You have spent a lot of time with us. No problem. It was a pleasure. Program, program it is. Learned a lot. <laughs> Learned a lot. Yeah. Thank you, Dorothy, madam. Thank you, Tom Vargas, sir. Tom Vargas, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.